Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. I said God sees you as a solution provider. In the book of Matthew 5, 17, we read earlier, said that you are the light of the world, a city set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. You know, you are the light, you are the solution to the to the economic crisis of those this world. Every challenges you can see around you, just know that God is seeing you as a solution to that challenges. God is seeing you as the one that is meant to provide the necessary solution to those challenges. You know, the book of um, First Peter chapter two verse five also said it likened you to a spiritual house. A spiritual house is where people come to seek for solutions, which means the nations of the world, kings and priests of this earth are meant to come to you for solutions. And you need to start seeing yourself like that because that's what God is seeing concerning you. In the book of um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 as well, I want us to see from 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm sure you I know it's a popular scripture and you can quote it often. But while getting ready, God asked me to read this um, portion of the scripture because of somebody yet in and I, I, I sense it. somebody connected to this live broadcast who broadcast who have had a lot of challenges in time past especially in the area of the finances and um, the challenges are as 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 has stayed so long that you've started seeing that um, what we are going through right now is because of some generational causes that has affected your your great grandfathers or things that has happened um, in time past to your generation. But I want you to see from the Bible again. You know, the book of Second Corinthians five seventeen says that therefore, if any man is in Christ, all things has passed away. The Bible says that if any man is in Christ, is a new creature. All things has passed away. Behold, all things are now new. You know, when God looks at you, He sees you as brand new. God does not see you as Tokumbo or something that once existed. God sees you as brand new. And when it is brand new, it is brand new. When it is brand new, it means it does not exist before. Your lineage now can only be traceable to Christ. And there's no cause. No cause is permitted in that lineage. No no generational cause can find expression in that lineage. And that's the same thing, the same reality you need to fill your mind with. No generational cause can find expression in your new lineage. You know, no, 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 no limitation is permitted in your new lineage. You know, and the devil knows this. And that's why he wants to keep tying you to your past. And God asked me to tell you tonight that you need to fill your mind and your heart with that reality. You need to fill your mind and your heart with that reality. Reality of the fact that you are new, you are brand new. Reality of the fact that there's no connection between you and your past. There's no connection between you and what your previous generations experienced. There's no connection between you and the wickedness that your great grandfathers has perpetuated in the time past. But where your own life is concerned, you are new. Your life is different, your path is different, and your experiences are different as well. You know, I like citing this example when I'm teaching something in this line. You know, a man who got married to a wife, maybe let's say somebody who has a woman who has been married before and has had let's say seven children you know to that new man that the woman is married to what would the woman say what would the man say about the woman the woman will say i just got married to a new wife whether the woman has had children before whether she has had 10 or 15 or she has been married to 10 husbands before as far as that new husband is concerned the wife is new and that's the simple truth that's the simple reality about the man's experience and that's the same thing about you as well you are brand new and you need to accept that reality and start working in it hallelujah i want us to see the book of philippians chapter 4 verse 13 philippians 4 verse 13 philippians 4 verse 13 
you know a lot of people uh, have this feeling of um, this inferiority complex the feelings of um, I don't have what it takes to be all that God has called me to be or I don't have what it takes um, to to um, attain some heights and position in life you know but the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 says that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength I I can do you can do all things through Christ who sees you strength so when God, God is seeing you as someone who has the strength someone who have the grace someone who have the anointing someone who have the capacity to be all that he has called and destined you to be God is seeing someone who have the wisdom to be a solution to this world to give solution to the crisis that the entire world is going through God is seeing someone who have the wisdom, who have the knowledge to profess solution to the economic challenges of the nations of the world. So don't let the devil keep flooding your mind with the fact that you don't have a good upbringing or um, you don't go to, um, you went to one, um, one local school or um, your parents um, are this and that. The reality remains the fact that when God looks at you, God is not seeing all that. God is not seeing your educational qualification. Or God is seeing somebody with capacity. God is seeing someone with grace. God is seeing someone with, an, with the anointing. God is seeing somebody with all that is required to provide that solution and be what he intended for you to be. So don't let the devil um, keep denying you of your new realities don't let the devil keep flooding your mind with thoughts that are not aligning with the things or with your reality in christ hallelujah praise god hallelujah you know you are loved by god you are loved you are loved by god when god sees you he's, he's, he loved you you are loved by god that's the reality you are loved by God, God does not see you as sick. God does not see you as being weak. God does not see you as being broke. You know, let's, I want us to see the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 as well. 1 Peter 2, I'm going to read verse 24. 1 Peter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter 2, 24 says that, He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sins, and live for righteousness by his wounds you have been healed when god sees you he does not see a sick man even if you are feeling weak in your body or you are even down on the hospital bed god god does not see you as being sick god does not see you as being sick you know i don't know i've, I've had i've seen people before that growing up, uh, you know, people call them names. People call them names. They abuse them and call them all sorts. And because of that, some people are struggling with a lot of feelings of inferiority complex. A feeling of is something is, is, is something wrong with me. Am I sick? Uh, am I not good enough? Or am, am I not okay? But God does not see a sick man when he looks at you. He sees a whole man. And you need to fill your mind with that reality. Even if you are feeling sick, God does not see you as being sick. And you are not sick. God does not see you as poor. See, the world we want to use some measures, yardsticks, and some standard to define who you are. But God does not see you as being poor. I don't care to know if your bank account is reading zero. But God does not see you as being poor. God does not see you as being poor. You know, I want us to see the book of um, 2 Corinthians 8 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Uh, we're going to read verse 9. 2 Corinthians 8. We're reading for verse 9. He says, For we know the grace of our lord jesus christ not the grace of any man 
not the grace of your father or the grace of your mother or the grace of your grandparents but the scripture is pointing us to one thing the grace the grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ it said that though he was rich yet he became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich so when God looks at you a sacrifice has paid the price that is required for you to experience the kind of wealth that you desire in fact more than the kind of wealth that you desire the sacrifice of Christ has paid has given all that is required so when God looks at you he's seeing a wealthy man and you need to start seeing yourself the same way as well irrespective of where you are start seeing yourself the same way God is seeing you you know, like I said earlier when I was starting um, the teaching I said there's a scripture that says that can two work together except there's forced an agreement you need to agree with God you need to align with God where your thought is concerned for you to experience these realities you know, for you to attract the kind of relationship for you to attract the kind of connections for you to attract the kind of ideas that will walk you to walk in the fullness of all that Christ has purchased for you on Calvary's cross. You need to align, you need to renew your mind. You need to renew your mind with these realities. And that's why I'm taking my time to show you from scriptures things that God is seeing concerning you. But the question I want to ask you tonight is, are you seeing the exact same thing? <laughs> I hope you're not seeing the opposite of what God is seeing. I hope you're bank account or your salary at the end of the month is not what you are using to measure yourself but one thing we are meant to use to measure ourselves is the written word of God because that's the mirror the same way when you are dressed and you are going out you go to the mirror just to see uh, whether your color is not um, is not wrongly um, is not is not rough you want to see as a lady whether your makeup is okay you want to see whether your hair is properly combed, your hair is well packed, and you, you use the mirror to make proper adjustments so that people will not laugh at you when they, when they come, uh, meet, meet with you during the course of the day. The same way, you are meant to look at the scriptures and make necessary adjustments. So tonight we've seen from scriptures how God is seeing us in different areas of our life. And, and God does not expect you to go to bed and sleep and continue the same way. You are meant to make necessary adjustments. Make necessary adjustments. Wherever it is that you've been lacking, or wherever it is that you've been seeing yourself in the opposite direction, make an adjustment and align with God. Make an adjustment and align with God. God does not see you as a sinner. The price has been paid, uh, the blood has been shed, the sacrifice has been has been made already. God does not see you as a sinner. He does not see you as a sinner. You know, your past and your current situation will want to bend and force you to start seeing yourself through the lenses of the world. And that's one of the battles every believer needs to learn to fight each day. You know, and that's why the Bible says that this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate day and night. Why? Because your experiences are daily as well. The things you see in the world, the pictures that the social media is painting to you, your experience in your place of work, your experience in your business, the, your physical experience in the world are daily. They are not occasional. They are not uh, once in a month or once in a week or once in a year. They are daily. And that's one of the major need for you to take meditation seriously. Right? Because if you don't meditate on these uh, scriptures daily, you will not be able to see it clearly. You won't be able to see the exact same thing that God is seeing. And what situation does is that they bend you to start seeing your realities through the world. Not through the world. Your situations, your circumstances... Your past experience, we want to force you to start seeing your reality from your experiences, from the world, not from the word of God. 
And the mirror through which you are meant to see from is the world. And that's where the need for daily meditation and confession comes in. So now I want us to see the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I'm going to read verse 2. Romans 12 verse 2. It says, So do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not conform. Like I said earlier, I said your situation, we want, we want to force you to conform. Your circumstances, we want to force you to conform. Your experiences, we want to force you to conform. But you are not meant to conform. You know, the latter part of the scripture, Romans 12, 2 says, it said you should make sure you renew your mind regularly and daily. And that's the only way you can win this battle. That's the only way through which you can see consistently, perpetually, and regularly what God is seeing about you. In the book of Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 says that, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you allow the thought of poverty to dominate your mind, that, 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 that's who you are. But where the reality that God is seeing concerning you is concerned, that's the opposite of what God intended for you. And I want to encourage everyone tonight, you know, beyond what you've heard tonight, beyond what you've heard this evening, I want to encourage you to take your time personally, sit with the word, and see the things that God has seen concerning you. Oh, in my finances, this is what God is seeing. In my marriage, this is what God is seeing. In my finances, this is what God is seeing. In my ministry, this is what God is seeing. In my academics, this is what God is seeing. This is what God is seeing. Oh, these are meant to be my realities. Oh, so what I've been going through is not meant to be. Oh, and hand is coming to you. Why? Because this is what God is seeing. And this will be my reality as well. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, the Bible says that as far as your eyes can see. So start seeing. Start aligning with God. Start seeing. Start saying. And one thing I know is the fact that it won't be long before you start experiencing them in the physical as well. You know, I'll wrap up by saying this. If you want to see God's power work in your life or through you in the life of others, you need to start seeing yourself the way God sees you. Can two work together yourself? There is first an agreement. Do you want to see the God's power <coughs> work in your life? Start seeing what God is saying. You know, do you want to see God's power flow through you to heal others? To be a solution to others? To be a source of solution to the nations of the world? Start seeing it. You are the light of the world. A city set upon the hill that cannot be hidden. You are a spiritual house where men, nations, presidents, kings and priests of this world are meant to come for to seek solutions to different situations and circumstances. You are. That's who you are. You are a son. You are a son. God sees you as a son. You have access to authority. You have access to inheritance. You have access to intimacy. You have access to fellowship. You have access to them all. And you need to start seeing all these things. And one thing I know is the fact that the more you see it, the more you experience it. The more you see it, the more these pictures and these images, these thoughts dominate your heart and your mind, the more you walk in the fullness of them. And those are the things that God intended for you to have. And tonight, I want to just lift up your hands and see after me. Say, Lord, tonight, I receive grace to see the way you you want me to see. I receive grace. I receive light tonight. In the name of Jesus, where different areas and different aspects of my life that I've been walking in darkness is concerned. I receive light tonight in the name of Jesus. Come and just open your mouth and, and talk to God tonight. And say, tonight I receive light in the name of Jesus. He got tender the most, my hand in the most. Jean la braca tender the most, my hand in the most. Han braba Jean la braca tender the most. He got tender the most, my hand in the most. Jean la braca tender the most, my hekepo plato zusa. 
I receive light in the name of Jesus. I receive light where different areas and different aspects of my life that have been walking in darkness is concerned. I receive light tonight in the name of Jesus. I say no more darkness in the name of Jesus. And I receive grace to stay consistent in the place of meditation, in the place of fellowship with God. I receive grace to stay consistent in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to see myself the same way God is seeing it. I receive grace to see my finances the way God is seeing it. I receive grace to see my ministry the way God is seeing it. I receive grace to see my marriage the way God is seeing it. I receive grace to see my business the way God is seeing it. I receive grace to see my academics the way God is seeing it. I receive grace to see my my family the way God is seen. Come and just open your mouth and pour out your mind to God tonight. Mark attended the most. Jean Abrakatan and the most grace is made available. Grace is released upon everyone tonight. In the name of Jesus, Makatan and the most. Jean Abrakatan and the most. Mahan and the most. Hambraba Jean Abrakatan and the most. He got under the most. Mahan and the most. Jean Abrakatan and the most. Mahan and the most. Hambraba Jean Abrakatan and the most. He got under the most. Mahan and the most. Jean Abrakatan and the most. Mahikepo Plato Ziza. And then they got under the Bosso Brananande Ganande Gennebosa, Racco Satayala Branaganande Gennebosa, Rambamba Baba Bogoso Branaganande Gennebosa, and then the Ganande Gennebosso Branaganande Gennebosa, Racco Satayala Branaganande Gennebosa, Rambamba Baba Bogoso Branaganande Gennebosa, and then the Ganande Gennebosso Branaganande Gennebosa. We receive grace tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you thanks. We appreciate you tonight for all you are set to do. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Praise God. Hallelujah. I believe you are blessed tonight. Hallelujah. All right. Um, just listen to the following announcement. You know, um, on Sunday again, um, we meet in church at the same time, 9 a.m. for first service and 11 a.m. for second service. Uh, please, uh, we would like to encourage all our nursing mothers to attend the second service. You know, last week Sunday, we realized that um, the space we have presently in church uh, was not enough to accommodate both uh, the, the adults and as well as children they were available in church. So please, nursing moms who would like to seek your indulgence to please come for second service on Sunday. You can come with all your children. All your children. There will be enough space for them uh, to uh, to stay and to move around at the back. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Alright. Um, I want us to package our offering as well. You are giving your tithes. You are giving your offering. I believe the account details to sow your seed to um, will have been posted on our um, church WhatsApp group. So, um, if you are ready to uh, give your seed online, you can just go to that um, WhatsApp group, copy the account details, and sow your seed. And I'd like to encourage everybody as well, so that you need to at least um, wait till the account is being posted. You can save it on your phone, so that you can easily um, have access to it and uh, sow your seed when it's time to do so. I believe you are ready with your offering tonight. Can you just um, lift up your hands wherever you are uh, as I pray over your seed? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you because we know that uh, out of the ones you've blessed us with, we are here with our seed. And Lord, I pray for everyone sowing their seed tonight that the windows of heaven are perpetually open.